The first one is how do visitors get to the site? Where are they coming from? Are they coming from search? Are they coming from you linking on social media? Are they coming like, you know, how are they getting there is the first obvious question. The second one is what pages are they entering on? Where are they landing? People tend to spend a lot of time optimizing their homepage and most of their traffic is not on their homepage because they're landing on content pages or they're landing whatever else. So, you know, take a look at, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated. Take a look at your basic stats and go like, what pages are people entering on? Which will also tell you a bit about where they're coming from and who they are and, and that kind of stuff. The third question to ask yourself is what are they looking for? When you have some sense of who they are and where they're coming from, you have some sense of what they're, why are they here? If they came from a search, what are they looking for? If they came from a link in your podcast summary, like who are they, where are they landing? What are they looking for? The fourth question is, what do you know about them? If most of your traffic is coming from your newsletter, well, then you know something about them. If it's coming from search, you know something else about them. If it's coming from podcast listeners, you know something else about them, right? If you see that certain types of content or certain types of pages are getting more traffic than others, that can tell you something about them, right? What can you figure out about these people? The fifth question to consider if you want to get more out of your website is what do they know about you and your work? How familiar are they? People that are coming from search randomly probably don't know a whole lot about you. They certainly don't know as much as people who have clicked a link from your podcast summary. So what is their awareness level when they land on one of these pages of any of this? Their awareness, in your case, of CME, their awareness of what you do, their awareness of any of this stuff. Where are they in their journey? And again, it will be different, but you can get a sense of roughly, you know, what these people who are landing on your website or landing on specific pages know. The sixth question is, what do you want them to know about you and your work? So once you know, like, okay, here's, I think they know X, Y, and Z, but if they do nothing else but land on this page, I really, I don't want them to leave without knowing this. I don't want them to leave without knowing I have a podcast. I don't want them to leave without knowing I have a newsletter. I don't want them to leave without knowing that I do coaching or I have a membership. I don't want them to leave without knowing what CME is. So depending on where they're at, there's different things that you want to sort of think about and ensure that, you know, strategically, what do you want them to know? The seventh question is, what's currently the most obvious next step for them to take on your website? So websites have a million things. And it's really interesting. If you pull up any page on your website and you just look at it and try to pretend you knew you just landed there, you know nothing about anything. And you go, what is is there an obvious next step to take? Or are there 20 different options that are all treated the same? I've got five things in the navigation. I've got four related blog post links. I've got two forms to get on my, like, yeah. if you look at your page and you go, what are they most likely to do? Or is everything treated equally and there is no most likely to do, right? Huge difference. And just sort of doing, you know, landing on your homepage and going, what is the obvious next step for someone to take here? Not what are all the options? Because there's a million options. What's the obvious thing for them to do? And then of course, what do you wish was the next step that they'd take? And then ultimately you can align these, right? I want people who hit my homepage to do this. Yeah, I'm happy if they do any of these five things. This is the one I really want them to do. You should have an intention. Again, whether it's homepage or any page, when someone lands on a podcast episode page on your podcast site, what do you actually want them to do? Go check out your personal website, give your, you know, join your newsletter. Like there should be, you know, you can even rank in terms of priority and then design the pages in a way to emphasize the things that you most want them to do. The ninth question to ask yourself about your website is how can you make the next step you wish they'd take the most obvious one, which is kind of an extension of what I just said. Once you decide this is what I want to do, now anything is possible. Do I want to have that message in a pop-up window? Do I want to have a video there where I tell them to do it? Do I want to, you know, there's no right way to do it, but sort of thinking through, okay, I know what I want them to do. Let me test and experiment with different ways to, to sort of get them to do that and measure the results. And then the last question to ask yourself about your website is, have you given them a clear reason to come back and or connect with you? Typically, this is going to be sign up to an email list, a newsletter, because that's kind of the strongest connection that you can have. But it doesn't have to be that. Again, it could be subscribing to a podcast. It could be asking you a question. It could be a contact form. It could be anything. But like, but so funny because you'll see people, especially with email lists, where they'll have a form on the page and it'll just be like, join my email list but they haven't given anyone a reason to do so. So that's just as important, right? Not only are you giving them the opportunity to connect, 
but giving them a reason to connect. And so, for example, let's say that you have a form or a link or something on a page to, you know, get on my email list. You know, I use me as an example, right? So my newsletter helps experts grow their business. If I'm referencing it on a blog post that's about podcasting, instead of just saying, get my newsletter to find out how experts grow their business, I might say, get my newsletter to find out how experts use podcasts to grow their business. I'm tailoring the message to what I know they're reading on that page. And it's not a lie because I do cover that stuff. It's not the only thing I cover, but I'm amplifying the stuff within my newsletter that's relevant to what that person is seeing. So if you're promoting a membership, a newsletter, or whatever on your individual podcast episode pages, your messaging might reflect that, right? Your messaging might say, if you found this conversation in this episode helpful, these are the kind of conversations we have in the membership every day. The difference between that and, hey, join my membership, I have a membership, you're going to create that relevance, which is ultimately going to help your conversion. So those 10 questions, you can ask them of any website you have, any page on an individual website, and they really will help you get a lot more clarity and sort of optimize in very simple ways what you're doing on the site.